Well, hello and welcome to Walking in the Light, our weekly recap of the Seventh-day Adventist Adult Bible Lesson Study. We are in a series from the book of Deuteronomy entitled Present Truth. Tonight, we are looking at Turn Their Hearts. Turn Their Hearts. Promises to be another provoking, another powerful, life-transforming study. So as usual, we welcome you and invite you to invite a friend to grab your Bibles, your quarterlies, and to study along with us as we explore this another lesson in our series. Well, we also want to remind you that you can always get your own copy of our quarterly by going to the website absg.adventist.org. That's absg.adventist.org. There's a link, simply click on it, and you will be able to download your copy of the quarterly so that you can study at your own pace and also share it with a friend. Well, have you ever wondered what it means to repent? Uh, is there benefit in repenting? What does God think about repenting? And how are we to do so? We are going to explore that subject tonight from those angles. So we want you to stay tuned and we'll be right back after a brief pause. Well, welcome back. Thank you for staying with us here on Walking in the Light. Remember, we're studying lesson number nine, Turn Their Hearts. Turn Their Hearts. And we're looking at the broad subject of repentance. We always begin with our memory verse. And so Elder Thomas is going to give us our memory verse. And then Elder Gordon will lead us in prayer. Our memory verse comes from Deuteronomy 4 and verse 29 from the New King James Version. And it reads, but from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for being in our presence today. We pray that you will turn our hearts to Jesus Christ. Help us to choose life, dear Father, so that we can be with you eternally. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well... We're studying turn their hearts, turn their hearts. And we want to go straight to the scripture and we want to begin with the foundation. And we want to look at uh, Romans chapter three, Romans chapter three, verse 23. Romans chapter three, verse 23. And we want to ask the question, what statement is there made about the character of all of humanity. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is anyone excluded from that, Elder Thomas? Any? Not at all. No one is excluded. It says all, meaning the entire human race, have sinned and fallen short. All right. Elder Bell? What does it mean that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? What position does that put us in? It puts us in what is called an exchange, exchange relationship with God. That means we are separated from God. We are separated from understanding right and wrong. We are incapable of doing right. All right. And Elder Gordon, while you're in Romans, simply go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 because we are learning that all of humanity have sinned and fallen short of God. Elder Bell says, because we have sinned and fallen short of God, we are separated from God. We are unable to respond to God 
and it seems like we are on a particular path. Let's see what that path is. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. What does the text say? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. So, Elder Gordon, according to that, in our sinning state, what is our final lot? Um, our final lot is separation from God. But God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to forgive us our sins, came and died on the cross, so that we can have eternal life. Absolutely. So the wages of sin is death. But I like, Elder Gordon, how you're quick to introduce that but into it, because that's the good news, and that is why we're here. Isn't that, Elder Thomas? Yes, certainly, certainly. If the first part of the verse were all that we had, we would be miserable, Elder Thomas. Yeah, I mean, if the first part is all that we had, there would be no hope, there would be no enthusiasm even in this life to do anything, because the end is, is just death. Absolutely. But you know, Elder Bell, not all of us like to acknowledge our true conditions. Sometimes we look in the mirror, and when we see the reflection of ourselves, we even want to change the mirror because we don't want to acknowledge our true condition. Here the Bible says that all have sinned. At the core, there is fallenness within all of us. How important it is that we accept God's assessment of us if we are going to see good days and have good life. Oh, that is a, what I call a googly of a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, how do we, if we're going to get assistance, how do we therefore understand our true condition? Uh, I'm going to bring it in a simple way like that. Uh, the only way to see it is to look at the perfect will of God or the perfect law of God. And when you look at your experience, your, your undoings in relationship to the perfect will of God, you begin to see how far fallen you are from what is right. And the, the best way to measure that is to look to God, the author and finish of our faith. For he alone is perfect, and he has given a perfect will to direct our parts. Right. Elder Thomas, I come at you another way. If I don't think that I am sick, I will never go to the doctor. If I don't accept the fact that I have a fever that has gone over 101 degrees, I probably will never take those aspirin or those ibuprofen to bring it down. Yeah. How important it is mm. then <clears throat> that I accept my condition as God says it is if I am to see life and have good days? Well, I think one of the first things too is to recognize that God is creator. God is the one who made me. God is the one who gives me life. If something is wrong with me, then God must know that something is wrong with me. So if God says that something is wrong with me, I need to trust God that something is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Whether I feel it or not, mm -hmm. whether I believe it or not, I, I, I think that I'm okay or not. I need to trust God in him saying that there's something wrong with me. And, um, and the good thing about it is that he's not only saying something is wrong with me, but he's saying he can fix it. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Elder Gordon, you know, for years I attended, uh, well, not for years, but some years back, I uh, attended what is called the Alcohol Anonymous session. I accompanied a, a, a good friend of mine, and um, those sessions were eye-opening. But one of the mantra there is that before they can help you, you must acknowledge that you are sick and that you need help. Is, is that the case when it comes to repentance, Elder God? We must first acknowledge that we have gone wrong, and therefore that is the beginning of our need for repentance. All of us have to... Um recognize the fact that something is really wrong with us. Mm -hmm. And um, the problem is a sin problem. Mm -hmm. We have all sinned and come short. Mm -hmm. We recognize the fact that there's nothing that we can do to eradicate sin. And God is the only one, through Jesus Christ, who came to this world mm -hmm. to help us to get away from this path that we're on. 
the mm -hmm. sinful part. Mm -hmm. All right. Labelle, go yes. ahead. Um, <clears throat> when we look at God's plan, and I'm, Elder Thomas, I'm going to piggyback on what you just said. When we look at God's plan, when Adam failed and separated, God wanted him to realize that he had failed mm. and separated. And he came saying, Adam, where art thou? Yeah. God knew where Adam mm. was. The question was not for God to know where he was. Mm. The question was intended to get Adam to acknowledge where he was. Yes. And, and this so is that a, he might uh, see, see his, his need nakedness. for... Repentance. Ah, yes. <laughs> and that I is what it's that. all about. And I think the, those who are listening understand that. God keeps calling us, where are you? Mm. I'm searching for you. Yeah. Yeah. He sends messages, warnings, counsel, laws, instructions. Right. Right. But he's forever calling, where are you today? Mm. Beautiful point, Elder Bell. Yeah. And you notice that the question came, where are you? It came after Adam had fallen off the rail. That's yes. right. He yes. had left the path mm. of safety. Yes. He had left the part of life, and mm. he was in a situation that was leading to death. Yeah. And so the question, where are you, as Elder Bell so rightly put, is about God taking mm. steps to help us to see our true condition yes. and for us to most importantly realize and recognize and accept mm. our need for repentance. Yes. Let's see how he's doing that in the life of Israel. Let's turn to... You wanted to say something, yeah, Elder um, Gordon? Go right ahead. Adam recognized that he had did something wrong because he was hiding from God. Mm -hmm. Now, before, God used to come down in the cool of the day yeah. and have conversation with him and yeah. his wife. Yeah. But he was running from God, yeah. recognized that he had did something wrong. Right. He had sinned. Yeah. That's why he was running. That's mm. it. And so he had to come back at a place where he would um, recognize his sin yeah. and ask for forgiveness. But he didn't do that at the time. Yeah. But we today have to recognize the fact that we have sinned. Right. Mm. You may come short. Right. And so we have to come back to God and ask God for forgiveness. But notice, you made a very important point and pick up on that. What did they do? They hid themselves. Yes. They run. If God had not, out of his goodness, out of his grace, gone down there and said to him, Where are you? Mm. Adam would have stayed in hiding. And in hiding, we can't be made well. Yeah. In yeah. hiding, we can't come back to the exactly. path of safety. Yeah. It must be repentance. So it is God's goodness, you see, that begins to prod us into repentance. But God has a great wish and a great desire mm. for us. Let's read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. Let's see what he had wished for Israel who had fallen off the rail and by extension, what he wishes for all of us who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let's go. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, out of the cloud, and out of the thick darkness, and a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass when he heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that he came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribe and your elders. And he said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We are seeing this day that God doth walk with man, and he liveth. Hmm. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If you hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that had heard of the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have heard and lived? So go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all the words, all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the words of the word, voice of the words, when you speak out unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. And thou, and oh, that thou were such an heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Thank you, Elder Gordon. Look at verse 29 again. It says, oh, that they had such a mind as this always. This is God now. Responding mm. to the children of Israel, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their descendants forever. 
Elder Bill, what is God's great wish here for Israel and his great wish for us? Oh, that, um, that we would give up, let go and let God. Mm. God's great wish is that somebody, some, those people there will have a mind to hear the word of God mm -hmm. and respond and return. Yeah. Uh, and wow. that's a beautiful, what an invitation. And it is the same expression he had in the upper room with mm -hmm. his disciples. I have desired with desire for a long time, I wish I could express to you the sacrifice that is required for salvation. But now is an opportunity. Please hear and understand. Right, so God's great desire, Elder Bell says, is that we would surrender. Yeah. We would walk in his yes. ways. We would repent, see our need, repent, and so yes. that he could bless us all the days of our life. Elder Thomas, what does God's great wish for us tell us about the character of God? It tells us that God's character is about love, it's about peace, it's about joy. It's, it's, it's about this, this freedom of expression where as we worship him as his children, he can lavish upon us the blessings of life, the benefits of life, the goodness of life. So God really wants to give us all these blessings. He wants to give us life in its fullness. And um, it's because of his love for us. So that really speaks of the volume of God's love for us. Absolutely. That this is what he wants of us, mm. that our hearts were steadfast that we will always be in his ways so that we will always prosper. Elder yeah. Gordon, this same wish of God that he used in verse 29, oh, that they had such a mind as this always to fear and keep all my commands. He said, I wish it was so. What does this <laughs> say about humankind, mm. our nature, our character, our reliability? You know, um, we have all sinned. Uh, there's nothing that we can do in ourselves, within ourselves, to live up to the merits of God. Mm. We have to constantly and daily mm -hmm. seek God because we can't make it on our own. Yeah. We have to make sure that we ask God to help us every single day to keep his commandments, to yeah. keep his statutes, and to keep um, you know, his word. Yeah. Elder Bell, let's probe that a little further, because you and I have sometimes the best of intentions. Yes. Mm. We have absolutely every intention yes. to do it. But lo and behold, we fall yes. flat on our faces. What is God telling us about human nature? Are we constant in our nature? Uh, good. Good question, and I'm going to try to answer that in uh, accordance with the biblical reference, where God is saying, I am not interested in lip service. I have a greater desire that your heart is fixed with a freedom of choice okay. to respond to my invitation okay. positively. Mm -hmm. And so it is, he says, listen, because I am God, I made everything. I know when you're genuine or not genuine. And so I want you to come to the point where it's no longer for fear of punishment or debt or fire, mm -hmm. but because of the love response and the ad admiration and respect you have for me as creator, yeah. sustainer, deliverer, that you would understand the fullness of this plan mm -hmm. or the fullness of the covenant of love with which I invite you to have a relationship with me. And this is it. I wish you could know from my heart. Hello. I mean, Brother Elakem and those who are listening, how do you convince a young lady that you love her immensely from the bottom of your heart? You find ways and means to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. But you don't just say it with words. Words don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Do it in action. Okay. And God calls Israel to action. Elder Thomas, so we're seeing, you said, that this great wish of God, this meeting of God, tells us that God is essentially a God of love, mm -hmm. a God of mercy who wants only what is best for us. Yes. With regards to what it says about the human factor, we're seeing that we 
are sinful. Yes. We are unstable. Yes. We cannot do it on our own, Elder Gordon has said. And Elder Bell again brought in that other aspect there. Here is the question now, Elder Thomas, based on that same wish. What do you say is God's overarching goal for the quality of life that he wants you and I to live? Listen again to the verse mm. as I read it. Oh, that they had such a mind as this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments. That is the purpose clause. Mm. It might go well with them and with their descendants forever. forever. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen here again that um, the whole idea of the nature of human beings is that we don't have in us the strength to continue in the path that God wants us to continue in. And so God is saying that he would desire that we would have that kind of strength to continue because what he really wants for us is for us to have the best of life and mm -hmm. not just for us personally, but for generations to come. Mm -hmm. The whole of humanity, God's design and desire is that we should live the fullness of life without all these issues and trouble and, and death and so forth that, that we face with. And so ultimately, in the end, God's want, God wants us to have eternal life. Eternal life without all the issues that we have to deal with where sin is concerned. All right. So again, Ella Gordon, I know we're milking this verse tonight, but it's so important. When God says that, that great desire, what is he telling us about where we are not going to find the kind of life that he wants for us? Because he says, oh, that their heart mm. would steadfast, that they would walk always in my ways and always in my commandments. In other words, by implication, he's saying, if we don't do what, we're not going to find mm. uh, 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 life, Lord God. We can't find it in the world. We can't find it in our families. We can't find it in our riches. We have to find it in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm. You know, you look around the world today and we see so much uprising and violence. Mm. People are looking for, searching for power mm -hmm. and prestige, mm -hmm. right? The only thing that man can find that is worthwhile is accepting Jesus Christ mm. as our personal savior. This world is in chaos, and it continues to be in chaos because we are seeking something different outside mm. of Christ. And so the only way that we can be you know, right with Christ is to surrender our lives to him. All right. Finally, Elder Bell, and this is the point that the lesson sinks in on. Oh, yes. that is God wishing, the one who has all power. He could have simply zapped them into repentance. He could mm. simply have bulldozed their yeah. will into repentance. Why didn't God do that? And what are we seeing here God respecting? What limits are we seeing God essentially putting on himself here insofar as human free will is concerned? It's, it's like his love for his creation restrains his his possible instant act in terms of rebellion, how to deal with rebellion. And so it is that invitation of love and the freedom he gives to man to make a choice based on evidence. We're going to go back to last week's so evidence that is revealed. What more could I have done to my vineyard that I have not done? God has done everything possible to reveal to man the better way, the plan, that is everlasting, like Elder Thomas says. So why don't he, doesn't he just force it on them, no, because, irrespective of wherever their will is? He, he wants them to repent yeah. here. Why doesn't he just force them into repentance here? When he made man, he gave them the opportunity of free choice. Mm. And that free choice must be decided by individuals based on the exposure or the revelation of the great plan of love. Mm -hmm. And so God says, I'm going to do everything possible. In fact... When man reached his extremity 
and God's a possibility from a distance. The Bible says in that time, in the fullness of time, Jesus came forth as a man mm -hmm. to redeem or to show us the Father's mm -hmm. will so that we can make that choice viable. All mm -hmm. right, Elder Thomas, Elder Bell has just given us the philosophical <laughs> version of it. I know you're a man of intense <laughs> practical wit, so I'm going to come to you now. And just before I come to you, the lesson okay. says, what an example of the reality of free will. Mm. Yes. Here we see that there are limits mm. to what God can do. Limits? God mm. having limits? Yes. Here we see that there are limits to what God can do in the midst of the great controversy. This use of me yitten reveals that even God can't trump on free will. Mm. For the moment he did, it would no longer be free. Elder, Elder Thomas, what do you take yes, from that? Yes. And how, because even the call here to repentance, it's, it's, it's a free choice that yes. he was, he's, he's giving you good and gracious reasons mm -hmm. to right. repent, showing right. you where you are, coming unto you, letting you know what his heart desire is, letting mm. you know what the path to life is. Yes. But then even that is left to your free will. Yes, it's, it's, it, and it must be left to my free will. Otherwise, because of the nature of sin, we, we read it earlier, we have all sinned and fallen short. It simply means that God would have to be always forcing. Mm. If he forces one time, if we're not freely doing what God says and he have to force us, he will always have to force us, mm -hmm. continually force us. And so God is not, this God of forcing, uh, because that is not love. God is a God of love. So love respects the, the free will and, and um, the free will to be able to respond mm -hmm. in the same kind. If we are forced, then we cannot be reacting with love. We will be reacting with force. Mm -hmm. When you're forced, you react with force. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're being loved mm -hmm. and you can see that and appreciate that love, then you respond with the same kind, which right, is love. Right. So God would never force because he would always have to be forcing. Uh, also, we, also, we will fear him mm. because he, is, uh, he will always say to do this and to do that. Right. And so because of the fact that he's not forcing us, he gave us a free will, we are free to sin. Mm. If we want to sin, or we get free to serve the Lord. Mm. And what better thing that is to serve the Lord because of the fact that he has given us free will. Right. Romans 2, 4 tells <clears throat> us, Man, it is the goodness of God. Despise it thou, the riches and the goodness and kindness mm. of God, knowing not that it is the goodness of God. Notice what it is yeah. of God. It is the goodness, goodness. of God right. that leadeth thee, caused thee to go in the path yes. of repentance, yes. to use your free will after he would have prompted you Yes. shown you, given you good and gracious reasons why you need to repent, mm. it is still left up to your free will to choose yes. to, co to cooperate with his spirit that's as right. he lead you into repentance. That's right. That's right. And, and, and that's the only way that we could really find the need yeah. for repentance uh -huh. is to be able to see that goodness of God, yeah. appreciate, recognize what it's really doing. It's drawing us to God. And then we will re realize where we are mm -hmm. and the need for repenting. So, Elder Bell, it's so important to understand God quickens the will. Yes. God gives good and gracious reason and prompt you. But still, we must exercise that freedom of choice, mm. that free will to choose the path of repentance and to cooperate with the work of the Spirit. Absolutely. And, 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 and he does, he, I mean, that's how they say the Spirit convicts you. Mm -hmm. And then the conscience is pricked. And in response to God's grace, we can make wise decisions. Yes. And this is what it is. So consistently, God is at work. Amen. The psalmist has two verses in Psalm 119, but I think it's a fitting prayer here. 119, verse 36 and 80. Elder Gordon, you can have 119, verse 36, and Elder Thomas, Psalm 119, verse 30. I think it's a fitting prayer here as we see God 
creating for us. Go right ahead, little God. Psalms 119, mm -hmm. verse 36. Yes. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to thy covetousness. All right. So what is the psalmist asking God to do? Incline my yes. heart unto my, thy testimonies That's and not right. to my covetousness. Turn my heart. He's is wishing, he oh God, turn, turn my heart. Mm. It seems to me that his will here is aligned with God's will. God wants us to repent our heart yes. to be toward him and here. We find Absolutely. the psalmist. So that is a practical thing that we can mm. do. Pray, O oh Lord, yes. incline my heart, my heart toward your will. Yes, Elder Tom. Psalm 119 and verse 80. Mm. 80. Mm -hmm. All right, not quite here. All right. It says, Let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. Oh, wow. wow. So, wow. Remember what God had said, Elabel. Mm. Oh, that they were always yes. like this. The yeah. psalmist recognizing the truth mm. of God's word. You see how important it is yes. to yes. repentance that we acknowledge the truth as God says it? Yes. The psalmist recognizes that. And what does he pray for, Elder Thomas? Ask for God to, to do this thing in me. Ah. Let my heart be sown in that Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Elder Bell, it is always a good thing to pray. God, this is your will. You do it bring in me. Exactly. That's right. You That's bring right. it to pass. Right. In it, it, interestingly, yeah. um, one of the things in my experience that I have learned is that God uses so many different circumstances to show me where I am, exactly. to show me the faults. And, and when I see that, I know that I can't do anything about it in myself. It calls me to ask God to help me with it. And that's the point of surrender. Yes. That's where God wants to bring us, where our exactly. wills are surrendered to his. Yes. And then he goes to work. And then he goes to work. Beautiful part. Seek me and find me. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, 25 to 28, Elder Gordon. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 25 to 28. When thou shalt get children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land, where unto you go over Jordan to possess it. He shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods and work of men's hands, woods and stones, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Wow. So this, Elder Bell, is God knowing all things perfectly, knowing what would happen in the future. That's right. Saying to Israel, this is what is going to happen when you are in the land. Why do you think it would happen to them after they have been in the land? What does that say about how the process of us moving away from God takes place? God saw and sees and knows. Mm -hmm. right? God is in the past, present, and future. And God saw that the rebelliousness, the idolatrous living, and I'm going to touch a little bit, the familiarity with the heathen around them, mm -hmm. getting too close to the borders. Remember mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago we saw what they came too close? <laughs> uh, they came too close to the borders of idolatry. And it, it started to have a sway on them. And God saw all of them. He said, if you do this now, I'm longing for you to search for me now, so that your heart and mind will be, will be fixed, that when the issue and the challenges come to your further generation and children, you would have something on which to rely to point them back to me. And guess what? I'll be waiting for them. Okay. Uh, let me end that day. Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting for them, mm -hmm. because I will forgive. All right. <laughs> you know, the thing, is, go that, right ahead, the thing is that they didn't immediately do what they were doing. Right. Um, immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, God said that because God knew the, the end from the beginning. Yes. And he, I mean, the, the generation after that were yeah. the ones who started to worship idols. Yeah. But they didn't immediately start to serve the idols as w and when they yeah. went into the land of yeah. um, right. Canaan. Mm -hmm. But it was a short, it was a generation after that yeah. who started to um, um, worship idols of stones and wood. Um, because God knew everything. God right. knew that they would have gone down that line 
um, after they went into the land of uh, right. Canaan. So Elder Thomas is kind of like a slow leak in the yeah. tire. Mm. That's right. You would have inflated the tire <laughs> yeah. to maximum pressure, and there is a slow leak, and it begins yeah. to gradually do. Why is it that we have the tendency, mm. humanity, that after we have gotten to this stage where we think that we have arrived, mm. that we suddenly and slowly we come into church with the zeal. We are on fire. Yeah. And then after a while, we think we know all. We'll fade. Yes. And then we begin to fade. But what, what's going on in us that is responsible for that kind of... Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's just the nature of sin. It's, it's just the nature of sin. We have a tendency, and it seems like the same idea that that the serpent gave to, to Eve mm -hmm. in the beginning. You shall be like gods. We still grapple with the idea of being like God, mm. thinking that because God has been so gracious to us, it's because of our obedience, it's because of our good works, why God is so gracious to us. And then we think that we reach this level where, regardless of what we do, God still just have to bless us because we're good. And, and we subtly begin to lose that grasp on the help that we need from God and think that we're doing something in our own strength. Yeah. It, it, it always brings me back to, to this, this experience that we all would have as, as adults um, raising children. And from the time the baby can take two steps, you're holding his hands. And, and, and as soon as the baby feel like it can take two steps uh. on its own, it's going away. <laughs> and, and we behave like that every yes. time. Yes. As soon as we think that we're doing it, yes. like Peter, walking on water, yeah. you don't have to look on Christ anymore because yeah. he's doing it now. Right. Right. We have the tendency to think like this. Uh. And gradually, we slip away and we go down. And the good thing is that God is always willing if we cry out. So the only it. sure and steadfast way is to That's stay right. focused on God, yes. stay wrapped up with God. Yeah. I think the songwriter puts it well, Elder yes. Bell. Yes. Prone to wonder. Yes. Lord, I feel it. Yeah. Prone to leave the God I love. Mm -hmm. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Yeah. Seal it for thy courts above. That's my prayer. Every yes, day, every yes, moment, yes, Elder Bell, yes. what, what's this, your prayer? This yes. particular section of our study um, challenges this, the philosophy and theology, one save, always save. Okay. Mm. That you believe you're secure in the promise. Yes, you receive the blessings, you're forgiven, but you feel sheltered now, and you're okay, anything can happen after that. And Elder Thomas is so right. We need to have a consistent heart search. And, a, and what God is so merciful, God... Mm occasionally allows us to, to see our nakedness, yes. to remind us that we yes. need help. Yes. Mm. And yes. I, I love this yeah. about, and this is what yeah. Moses is saying, that God is going to open up issues so you can see yeah. you are sliding yeah. and reach out for help. Wow. Like David says, oh, I wish I could be saved. In Psalm um, 14, he, he cries out, I wish there was a savior. Where, how long do I look for a savior to rescue me, mm. to be my refuge? And that's so important. Consistent relationship, heart search mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis is important mm -hmm. to maintain a relationship. All yeah. right. Go, go yeah, right ahead. I mean, after we become Christians, we are baptized, we think that we have arrived and we think that we know everything. But we have to remember that we have an adversary mm. who is always trying to strike you down. Oh, yes. And so oh, the yes. only way that you can maintain a relationship with Christ it's through prayer and Bible study every day, Absolutely. consistently. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to fall. Lean not unto thy understanding. Yeah. That proverb yeah. says, yeah. trust right. in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not unto thy mm. own understanding. In all thy the ways, ways acknowledge, acknowledge him, him, and he yeah, shall yeah, direct yeah, thy part. Another song says, if we forget God, Satan Satan will rule. rule. Mm. <laughs> yes. Sin will cover. Yes. Sin will yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It is so powerful. Yes. Yes. But yes. Elder Bell has been saying, and Elder Thomas has been saying, Elder Gordon, let's see what God has to say. Verses 29 to 31 of that same passage. Beautiful. Because Beautiful. God knows Beautiful. all of this. And as Elder Bell began to hint, 
God would use even our difficult circumstances mm. to show us our need, help us to see our need for repentance. Right? Absolutely. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Mm. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, and he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. Absolutely. All right. Mm. So, Elder Thomas, first and foremost, there is no lost cause with God's children when it comes to God, if mm. they know what to do. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, <laughs> certainly. There is no lost cause. I, I like that, Elder. I like that. <laughs> There's definitely no loss if they know what to do. And God always says what to do. Yes. Absolutely. So, so he doesn't leave us wandering yes. and, and can't find. He say, if you seek and you search, you're going to find me. Mm -hmm. But he has already set the path in yes. which we should look That's right. to find him. That's right. That's right. Elbel, look at verse 30 again, says. Absolutely. When you are in tribulation, yes. notice mm -hmm. when they're going to do this, Elder Thomas. Mm -hmm. yes, when yes, yes, they're yes, in tribulation yes, yes. and all these things come upon you in the latter days, you mm. will return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. Elder Bell, God uses tribulation and these things, the consequences of our sins, to help us to come back to him, to return to him? It seems so impractical and, and sort of not fair. But the Bible is saying that even after a bad choice and the consequences of that choice, I am still able to redeem you. Mm. I mean, I wanted to read it mm. from things says here. God's grace is amazing. Mm -hmm. Even after they fall into a horrible evil mm -hmm. of idolatry, mm -hmm. even after they have received the due consequences mm -hmm. of their sins, mm -hmm. if they turn to the Lord, he will forgive them mm -hmm. and restore them in short. Can you imagine? He not mm -hmm. only redeemed them. Mm -hmm. And look at the word restore. What mm -hmm. it means to restore? Mm -hmm. To bring you back to your former state. That's right. yeah. and, 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 yeah. and this is where the church needs to, to rise in the redemptive work of God. You don't think we do a very good job I don't think we do a very good job in restoring people to their formative mm. status. Mm. They, they need to trust God's mm -hmm. ability mm -hmm. to maintain, secure, protect, yeah. and, 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 and um, secure. That's a powerful point that you made yeah. because I, I am always amazed and I thank God that um, one of the things that he has been doing in my life is um, getting me to uh, not to, to forget what I have heard, what mm. I have learned secondhand, and to yeah. get me to look into the scriptures and to look upon him and see what he says, how he deals with yes, people, yes, as yes. opposed to what I see going on around me or what yes. I might have been taught. Yes. But picking up on something that Elder Bell says, because Elder Bell, you notice what God says when he brings them back, he's going to treat them even better than he treated mm. exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And that is borne out in the prodigal son. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So that he went out, he was always a child, mm. but when he came back, after he would have messed up and fallen so gravely, yeah. the latter end just is so profuse. Elder Thomas, what is the lesson that we need to learn? Does mm. Elder Bell have a point and how can we learn to be better at restoring our fallen brothers and sisters? and receiving them back into mm. grace, the way that God lavishes grace on us when we fall down. I, I think it, it, that is so critical to um, the proclamation of the gospel, because the gospel would seem to have lost power mm -hmm. if one is not restored in the way that God does. Mm -hmm. If it's not shown, if it's not felt among the people, of God, then the gospel loses its power. Oh. Because all of us would have been in that position mm -hmm. of being alienated mm -hmm. from God. And if God now brings us into this place where he can use us and show us with all this blessing and give us this, this promise of eternal life and, and restoration, then the same should be done when anyone among us falls away 
and return. We should be able to be um, conduits, as it were, for restoration, so that, so that we are the ones through whom um, the person who falls away would recognize the power of God's restoration. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, Elder Bell is so right, so many times we don't see that. We become like the prodigal brother who now looks at the son who returns and requires such and requires such and requires such before we can say, let him in the house, you know, or, or let him go and, and you know, occupy and, and be freely, operate again freely as a brother. And so I think it's very critical to the proclamation of the gospel if w the way in which we look at restoration. I think that uh, was, is a good example of the prodigal son. I mean, here, the son who went in a far country and he came back and the father accepted him with open arms. Mm -hmm. And the brother outside saying, I mean, he went and wasted his substance and righteous living, right? And so when we look at the church today, when people made mistakes and they go out of the church, right? Rather than restore them, which God would have done, we say, no, you have to sit down, man. You have to sit down for a while, you know what I mean? And so we have to make sure that when the brother comes back, we restore them to their rightful position, because God wants um, them to be restored. Let's mm. have God restore us. Yes. Absolutely. And look at uh, um, Elder Gordon, read verse 31 again. Why is God willing to do this? What do we find about the character of God that is going to make him accept people who do nothing but mess up if they freely accept his repentance and return to him. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Oh, well, you need to read that again. Mm. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Mm -hmm. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy mm. fathers, which is sweet unto them. All God right. is a covenant keeping, keeping God. Amen. That's what God Amen. is. Amen. Yes. And Amen. he has mercy beyond compare. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So let's, 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 let's pause that, 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 that uh, verse there. Again, and look at the promises. Look at, first of all, the assurance that we have. Mm. That when we freely choose to repent yeah. at God's prompting, that what we will find is forgiveness and acceptance and Absolutely. restoration and yes. renewal. Look at the first part again, Elder Gordon, for the Lord our God is a merciful God. Mm. In other words, our acceptance is grounded in the character of God, yes. not on merit, not right, on even right, what right. we have done, exactly. right. but it's grounded. That's the assurance. Yeah. That's why you and I can return boldly. And that is why yeah. anyone who is listening to us, no matter how far that you have fallen, that is why you can freely choose to repent and have the assurance that God will forgive you, restore mm. you, and reclude you, because he is merciful. You know, I look at an example in the Bible about Manasseh, which one was <laughs> one of the most wickedest king in Israel. Mm, he yeah. caused his children to pass through the fire. Yes, yes. I mean, this is a pagan practice. Yes, mm. yes. And he was taken down to Babylon, they would dig out his eyes, and he returned to the God yes. of our fathers, and yes. God forgave him. Amen. Oh, that Amen. Mm. So let's look at the, 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 the promises that comes out of that sterling character of God. He says, number one, he will not leave you. Mm. Wow. He will not forsake or he will not leave you. Yes. He Absolutely. will not leave you and nor Jesus, forsake you Jesus, if you return and to And Jesus him. confirmed that in, in the gospel. Yeah. Behold, I'm with you always until yeah. mm. the end of the world. Yes. There's Elder, nothing that God, that any human being can do that God will never forget them. Yeah. Nothing. Mm. Whatever you could even blaspheme against God. The only sin is that uh, he will not forgive you if you totally reject him mm -hmm. and, and, and say that I don't want no part of God. But any right. else, anything else that you, any human being would have done, God is able and have mercy for the gift. Well, I like this other promise, Elder Thomas, because, mm. you know, if... I have sinned and done terrible, and depending on the uh, how bad this thing is, yes. I could be in fear that God is going to wipe me out. But the yes. verse says that, the promise says, not only will I not leave nor forsake you, but I will not destroy, destroy. you. Yeah. Brother Thomas, what does that do for you? Yeah. And you have to repent. 
I mean, I mean, one of the things that we are fear, we're fearful of, <laughs> God is, <laughs> is is the punishment that that is due for what we have done, and um, we're reminded that God doesn't give us what we really deserve, and here He's saying, while what we deserve is is death, the wages of sin is death. Mm-hmm. He's saying that if we return, He will not destroy us so that we don't have to fear. I mean, why then wouldn't we want to return? Mm. Because if the wages of sin is death, yes. that is guaranteed as mm-hmm. it were. Mm-hmm. But then if we return, then we'll, life. we'll return into life and he would not destroy. Why wouldn't we want to return to God? No wonder Psalm is praying, Oh Lord, oh that my heart, were mm. steadfast within me. Yes. That fear factor that the enemy pushes into our heart. No wonder God yeah. says, I am merciful. Don't yes. bother with that old devil yes. that tells you that. That's true. I am merciful. Mm. And the thing is, the devil suggests subtly that you become such an embarrassment or shame. Mm. And, and I'm going to be subtle here. Sometimes the church itself plays on that psychology by saying there are some sins of different degree. Some are publicly exposed and some are <laughs> private. Yes. So I'm, I'm, yes. coming, I'm yes. going somewhere yeah. with it. Yeah. Some are publicly exposed and some are private. And the publicly exposed have a different method of dealing with it than the private things mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so we become ashamed when all of our sins become too public. Mm-hmm. So it becomes difficult for us to willingly come back. Yeah. Mm. And we can't, because God doesn't force us, yeah. the, the pathway back is very, 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 very difficult. Mm-hmm. But if, we was, if, if our sins, no matter what they are, were not seen in degrees mm. of publicity, mm-hmm. then we would be willing to come back to God knowing that God will forgive us of us because of his mercy. So what yes. mindset does the person who has bought into that kind of way of thinking need to adopt now, knowing that God is saying that I I am merciful, I will not destroy you. How should that now renew Mm. my thinking insofar as that way of thinking that Elder Bell described is concerned? Yeah, salvation is not dependent on man. Uh, (laughs) Um, <laughs> the mindset so whether is, I am accepted by men or not. by association yes. or not, yes. I am accepted by, by God. Christ. And that's so right. I am returning to him that's right. in that's repentance. Right. That's Absolutely. Right. Beautiful, that's beautiful, right. beautiful. And then finally, I will not forget the covenant with your fathers. God has a covenant that he has cut with Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm. And when you and I come to God mm-hmm. through his son, Jesus Christ, we are mm. under that eternal covenant, sealed with the yes. blood of Jesus Christ. More so, we are under that covenant in mm. which the sin, all our sins, past, present, and future, have been atoned for yes. by Amen. the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. The Lord for yes. No wonder First John 1, 9 tells us, again, God's will is clear, before that, my brethren, I write to you that you sin not. Mm. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar. But Mm -hmm. here is the text. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. Notice the if again. It's the if of repentance. Yes. It's the if of you will use your free will after you have messed up. And I have prompted you, shown you your true condition. Mm. And I've made it known to you that the mm. way to return to life is the way of repentance. Yes. If you freely accept it, then praise the Lord. You will have forgiveness. Praise you the will Lord. Have life. Yes. 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 <laughs> I mean, in, in the time when be, and, and it calls for the yes. urgency mm. of, of no. If you hear his voice, yes. harden not, not your heart. Not. Yeah. And, and and this gives the the, the idea of there's no need mm-hmm. to harden your heart no. because God is able to change and restore. Elder El- 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 Thomas, Elder El- El- Kemp, if I know I'm in the, in the cold, in mud, in mess, but I know that there is a fresh garment waiting for me mm-hmm. if mm. I willingly come out of the mud, <laughs> if I willingly come out of the mud. Mm-hmm. Yes, Wouldn't I yes, come out yes, of the mud? Yes, but yes. if I think there's going to be whipped, 
and right. uh, and, and criticism and finger right. pointing and everything at the at the, the entrance, the exit of, of that mess. I would I rather stay in the mess Amen. because I don't want to have to face that issue. Yeah. But graciously, God's mercy says, come unto me, yes. all ye that labor, and are pressed down in sin and this destruction. Come mm -hmm. out of that. Be separate. Come. Yes. For I have prepared for you a better way, a better place. Yeah. So I, I, I love what the quarterly says, how it puts it. The simple idea. The idea is simple and straightforward. It says, if you mess up, terrible consequences will result for you and your family. Mm. That's right. Because that's what sin does. Yes. And that's what God doesn't want us to have. Then he says, however, even then you can repent and the Lord will take you back and bless you. Amen. In other words, despite all that happened to them, speaking of Israel, despite their auto violation and breaking of the covenant, the Lord was not through with these people. And if they didn't want him to be through with them, they could manifest that by they could manifest that desire by mm. repentance. That is freely choosing to repent and turn to God. God is not through with us yet. Elder yes. Thomas, yes. Elder yes. Bell, Elder, Elder um, uh, Gordon. And if we want that, we can choose mm. to freely accept his repentance. But the thing is, our repentance must be sincere and yes, it must yes, be with yes, our whole yes. heart. God wants us to return to him, Elder Bell, yes. with our own heart. Why is partial repentance not true repentance? Let's, let's wrap for that 10 seconds. Uh, it limits, if you have part repentance, limits the total plan of salvation that God has prepared. It limits what God can do. Mm -hmm. But when you have full repentance, there's no limit to what God can do. Mm -hmm. The difference? Yeah. Partial repentance limits what God can do. Mm -hmm. Total repentance does not limit what God can do. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Elder Thomas? I, th I think um, when we look at Judas, mm -hmm. and you would say that Judas was sorry. The Bible did say that he was sorry. Um, was sorry for the consequences for the consequence, of the sins. That's right. And that could, be, sin themselves. that could be considered partial ah, repentance. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> partial repentance. Ah. And so, and so there is no real restoration that can take place, yes. like what Billy is saying. Yes. But full repentance brings the restoration. Absolutely. And full repentance, this, this is what Peter did. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was sorry that he rejected Christ. Mm. He went out and wept, but he went and asked for forgiveness and yes. came back to restoration in Christ. Yes. And so what we're seeing is that the way to life is to repentance. I mean, mm. even Jesus came and preached repentance. Repent, for the kingdom yeah. of God is at hand. John the Baptist came. He preached repentance. That's right. You know, in the day of Pentecost, yeah. when Peter preached, the souls yes. of the men were pricked. They asked, what must we do? And Peter mm. said, repent. Yes. Why repent? Because repentance is the way back to life. How do we repent? Mm. At the prompting of the Holy Spirit of the living God and the circumstances through which he moves in our lives to show us where we are and our need to return to him. If at the prompting we exercise our free will to cooperate with him, he will lead us back to him in repentance. And in coming back to him in repentance, we will find that he himself would circumcise our heart, would change our minds, would give us minds that delight to serve him and minds that walk in his way. Oh, friend, I don't know where you are tonight, but if you find yourself outside the will of God, I strongly recommend to you, hear the voice of God, accept his repentance, turn to him. He will receive you. He will restore you. He will circumcise you. And again, you will begin to live life the way God meant for it to be. That's where we have to leave it for today. We thank you for joining us here on Walking in the Light. God's willing, we will be back next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for studying with us. Until we come your way again, may God bless you and may he keep you. Goodbye now.